welcome. So good to have you here. What I'm doing here today is uh, making a community pot of my Bletilla striatas. I've got two here. One Bletilla striata, that is the normal variety, and then over here the variegated one, which is the Albo striata. And these two I got from Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents over in Portugal. So the first one that I got, I put up in semi-hydro with Akadama and I've got a top dressing of gravel just because I didn't want to keep watering during the summer months and this somewhat helps to keep the moisture in and stop the Akadama on the surface from evaporating too quickly. But then the second one arrived, <laughs> thank you. And now I'm sort of thinking, well, you know, I could have probably left my original Pletia in the pot another year, but she has grown so well. In 2022, she grew 10 new growths. So, of course, I'm going to have to be repotting my other Bletia into the setup that I prefer to have, which is also Akadama and Semi Hydro. And it got me to thinking that instead of having two separate pots, this one growing so vigorously, what I'm going to do is put them in a huge bowl. At least I hope it's huge, it's big for me, but I hope it's big enough for these two <laughs> to then, you know, just fill it up, grow and bloom eventually. I'm hoping that this one will bloom. And I can do the two different ones in a single pot because I don't grow my orchids to take them to shows. I mainly grow them for my pleasure and space on the patio while these live outside for me all year round. It's easier to have, let's say, one big pot as opposed to scatterings of several individual pots. I do want to save this uh, gravel and that's why I'm kind of picking away at it, but I'm already getting a little bit impatient. Yeah, the attention deficit coming in. I prefer to clean my media as opposed to pick it off. So yeah, I'm getting a little bit. What I want to do is get this one actually, you know, the plan was to get the gravel off the surface and then only then unpot the Bletia here and clean her up from the soil because I don't want these bulbs exposed to the air for too long. They're not used to that. But having had this all cleaned up, then I could possibly, you know, be much faster in potting this up because these guys will just come out of the pot and be placed into the next pot. That is the plan. However, I'm not exactly, you know, an expert on Blitias. I'm learning about them, trying to get this one to bloom for the first time, etc. So I don't know how deep the roots go. And if the roots are deeper than what I'm thinking, we may need a bigger bowl, <laughs> which I also have. I also have a bigger bowl for what I've got planned. But yeah, I'm getting a little bit, you know, anxious. So what we're going to do, instead of me picking it away, I've got fresh gravel that I can use as dressing, as top dressing afterwards. Instead of doing this, huh? You see, I don't want too much of the gravel mixed in with the Akadama at the bottom so many reasons why I'm going to try and get off as much as possible because too much mixing in. There's already terrarium grit in the Akadama that's already making it very, you know, airy, allowing for some kind of drainage so that the pot doesn't go too soggy. Uh, more gravel in that mix plus the mix that I have. Uh, which also already has terrarium grip mixed into it, all in preparation for these two. Yeah, let's, let's give this a little bit more of a try. It's a beautiful sunny day on the patio, and I will be back once I've, you know, fiddled away enough to my satisfaction to get these bulbs, tubers, growths out of the pot. And I'm back because I had another thought I wanted to share with you. And besides that, if you see the images, you know, shifting, it's because I keep putting the equipment back into the shade. Although we are cooling down, the sun still has some impact and I don't want it to heat up and shut down on me. But my other thought I wanted to share with you as to why I'm doing this now, I find it's a bit premature. I wanted them all to lose their leaves. 
but uh, this is probably the last nice day. We are expecting rain for the next three days. While the Akadama is damp, if these guys are living outside, they're going to get saturated. And ugh, I don't want that. I don't want to be waiting again then for the Akadama and the pot to dry out a little bit before going in. So despite me wanting to wait, thinking that maybe this is too premature, it's easier to have the growths be dormant in the pot when disturbing them as opposed to while they're, you know, just going dormant. My opinion, like I said, I'm new to bletillas, but I always think that you don't want to be disturbing something, you know, until it's asleep. <laughs> Meanwhile, don't do that with me. There will be consequences. But yeah, I was waiting actually for all the foliage to go. I don't think it's going to make much difference. I think it's best to get in there and then leave them to their vices and let the rain settle them in nicely. Rain is always good, especially if we have a lot of rain as is anticipated. And I'm seeing some gorgeous roots down there, which I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to continue to pick away and I'll be back. Okay, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm being ever, ever so careful. And I've found two new growths coming. I mean, yes, the roots actually look like they are in active growth and that is concerning, but I'm already into the project now. I intend to see it through to the end, but this is supposed to go to sleep. What are you doing growing new growths? And you can see how much up against the pot they are. So yeah, um, yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna proceed. Plan A is a go, regardless of what I'm seeing, but I am a little confused. <laughs> this shouldn't be happening, not yet. Three new growths, there's another one right here. Oh, you guys. All right, let's get her out of the pot and see what we're up against. Let's do this. The growths are here, here, and here. So we will tip her in this direction. Oh my goodness, there's even more coming up. Let me see if I can show you and keep it in focus. You see all those little green pointy things there? So what I can detect, there's four already starting. Look, either way, it is starting to grow. I don't think I'm gonna do anything wrong by getting into them now. Either dormant or just starting to grow. I think we'll be okay. But I am very surprised. I was not expecting that. She's in here tight. This is not like you can just grab and pull. Oh boy, there's a lot of activity in this pot. Okay, happy days. Let's keep going. Here she comes. Wow. I was not expecting this, but I'm glad we're doing it. Wow. Learning, learning. This is amazing. This is, I'm, you know what? So glad I'm doing this now. Beautiful. Wow, check this out. It's a beautiful sight. Look at these growths. Look at them all. There's one up here, there's there, there, there. And if we turn her around, look at these two right here. Well, 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 and look at this root system. So my bowl is not going to be deep enough. I'm gonna have to remove some of this lava rock. 
so that the roots can flatten out on the bowl. I have a 30 centimeter bowl, but you can see already what we're up against when we hold the bowl up against it from top to bottom. That lava rock has to come out. And I have my sprayer because I'm gonna be keeping the roots nice and damp. I have a separate bowl here to put the lava rock in. And I've got large lava rock, woohoo! I'm getting my resources back. <laughs> Look at this. Wow, yes, there's gonna be root damage, but now I'm not concerned at all. And I'm keeping my lava rock separate because I would like to wash it at a later stage. I may reuse it, I may not. Based on what I'm seeing here now, I don't think I need to reuse it. I can save it for others. This is awesome. I don't know if you can see down here. Look at all those new roots there. She's confused. Or she knows more than I do because, wow, it feels like spring. It, this is what she would do in January. At least the last time that she started sprouting where I actually could see any growths was January. Thankfully, the roots are not too attached to the lava rock. Yes, I'm doing some damage and taking off some of the fine hairs, but considering what she's doing right now with all the new growth, yeah. It's interesting to see that the roots aren't dying. They don't die. I expected the roots to be dying. Just, you know, well, something goes dormant, but it would appear, and this is for my own mental, like my mental logging of understanding this orchid, it would appear that the roots just continue growing, growing, and weather conditions based, it doesn't matter whether it's spring, it's about the temperature, it doesn't matter about the, you know, calendar year, if the temperature is right for the orchid, then she is going to grow. That is my conclusion. If I'm wrong, or if she's only starting, then we'll go dormant and reactivate later on. Come January, February, then so be it as well. For the time being, I'm gonna take a real mental note of what I'm noticing here for future reference. As with any other orchid, we've got active root growth. Repotting timing is perfect. We've got active new growth. It's all good. Now I'm being pedantic about taking out and separating my lava rock right now because I would like to reuse the akadama that's in this catch tray into the new bowl. That's why this is all a little bit laborious instead of me just moving on with the next orchid. Timestamps, as usual, are in the description. All the lava rock is out that I can tell. Plenty of air back in the base, but look at this. One, two, that's a gorgeous root. Three, four, five, six, that's on this side. What I'm going to do now is I've cleaned out the pot that she came in and I'm going to put her into that pot. No, I'm not. I'm putting her into a wider pot because I don't want to fetch her back into the same snug bowl that she came from. So she is now in a bigger bowl. Same snug pot that she came from, correction. I'm going to keep the surface of the roots now nice and damp while we work on the albostriata. My paraphernalia has increased exponentially. <laughs> I wonder if I've got enough of everything. Anyway, I brought everything out, including the kitchen sink. So I have enough crocking material because I brought out a bigger bowl right here. That's the 30 centimeter one right here. It's the self-watering setup. This one, I just put two holes in to make it semi-hydro because I don't have an inner pot that size. I could get one, but it really is not necessary. 
and the 30 centimeter one will serve me well for another orchid. So we're gonna get the major huge bowl into action. I've brought myself large Lekka. I don't wanna be using that large lava rock anymore. And then I have more crocking items, which are clay shards, sorry for that jiggle, which are clay shards that I also got from Fernanda Nacimento orchids and succulents to use like in a ceramic experiment. But to be honest with you, I need crocking for this one. So that's what I'll be using as well. Large Lekka I've got plenty of. We'll be okay with that. Right, the only thing now is to get going and let's get Letia Ibostriata out of its pot and see what we're up against there. Major cleanup coming up after all this. <laughs> I think this one's a little bit more straightforward than what we saw earlier on. That Bletia is now resting in a little bit of water in the shade at the moment. Do we have roots going down? Yeah, but they're not impeding. So we'll just pull her out. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> beautiful, I say, beautiful. Right, there's no easy way to do this. By containing mess, we're not gonna gain anything. Beautiful active roots, and yes, I want all of this off. Well, let's say if I can get 90% of the soil off, I'll be happy. And I'm holding on to an older bulb while I tease the root system. I have opted for the bigger bulb because after what I saw with the other Blitia, once this one starts to get going, we'll be back in that smaller bowl in what, two years, three years, and yeah. Let's leave them alone for a few more years than that. Okay. Okay, <laughs> the two leads are active. Oh, uh, is this one trying to grow a new growth, but is it going down? It's gonna have to find its way or is it creating a new tuber? We'll see. Right now we can identify two new growths Careful, careful where I'm bashing. Super interesting. We can go into the minutiae a little bit of cutting off some of the dead roots, but being a terrestrial, it's not really here nor there. It's more for aesthetic purposes. Got to be careful. I don't want to get ahead of myself and just, you know, then pop off the rhizome and suddenly have two pieces. I just want to avoid that as best as possible. Coca choir? Yeah, that's a bit of Coca choir there. Let me get my little snips out. This is truly not really a necessary step. The roots are fine. These were just at the surface as the media started to compact itself. Now, if I had my own garden, I would say let's make a bed for them. I don't have my own garden, that's why they're going in a pot. So that if I have to leave, I can take them with me. Okay, let's give them a bit of a wash. Now the reason I'm trying to get all of this off clearly is because I'm changing the media. Usually, it would not be necessary to do all of this. I did this as well with the first lot that I got from Fernanda. OK, 
cleaned all the soil off. It also gave me back then a better understanding of the root system. Clearly, I read the signs correctly because that is one heck of a root system. It's amazing. Good stuff. And here we can see how cool they grow. It's like an iris. Very, very superficial rhizomes. And then eventually the roots should go down into the media. Classic, classic example. Love it. Big, big bowl. First, we are going to start with the large leka. Do a height check. Too high. <laughs> Too high. Okay. Now, what I could do with that root ball is chop off, like I do with other orchids, like, you know, a third, maybe a quarter of the root ball, but I'm not going to do that at this point. I'm going to see if I can flatten the roots out in the bowl. We can still take off a little bit more. And the beauty of all this is as well that the roots at the bottom are actually water roots because they had grown into the reservoir. Now, let's get the big one in first. Just a tad. Spread this out. better. That's how I like it. I like it like that. Here comes number two. I got lots of new growth in this corner right here, so I'm being mindful of their space. We've got growth coming in this corner right here, being mindful of their space. Growth coming out everywhere, so where are we going to put in our second one? I'll have to scooch you over a little bit like that, and you have growth coming in a diagonal, so we'll get you in like that. <laughs> nice and snug, right up against the other one. And I'm gonna fill around with my dry akadama first, because that should then fill up the little nooks and crannies. That's the plan. Even though I'm covering with a top layer, I'm just making sure that the surface roots are gonna go back into a wet environment because I don't think I have enough media for this whole pot. So we're gonna have to fudge a little bit. Ideally, if I had more Akadama, I would be much more liberal, but I'm concerned about the surface because the surface was not as exposed as it is now. It'll be okay, I'm sure it'll be okay. Now, probably I could be using small leka here, but I'm kind of running out of small leka and it's a much needed media for me at the moment. Then I need large leka. I would like to stick with my small leka that I have as my stash. So we're gonna be improvising. The thing is I don't need to be buying a whole bag of akadama because I don't need that much of it. I've got ceramus now for whatever I have left to do. And if I don't have enough of this gravel, then I always go to the playground and get myself some more. <laughs> this is the gravel I collected from the playground. There's plenty more where that came from. Let's cover up that new growth there. Cover up around the edges just to cover up the roots that were exposed. And I will be getting more gravel and topping it up 
at a later stage after I've walked King. Because I need to wash the gravel, I've got to boil it and clean it just to be 100% sure, you know. I don't want any kind of chips or popcorn debris in my gravel. <laughs> but I think she's going to be okay. So we got Letia Striata and Albo Striata, both from Portugal. Obrigado, Fernanda. And now I'm going to fill the reservoir, make everything wet with fertilized water. This is RO water because that's what I've been using in the recent times. Eventually, the structures, the bulbs, etc., I will expose them. But for now, I have to first get more gravel, make sure that the orchid is settled in. But I do like to see the growths around the surface and I will expose them eventually. It's just the new growths, you know, stay underneath the media. My goodness, you're not supposed to be doing this. You see, there's one. But I do want to expose these bulbs at a later stage, once I filled up the pot. Now, that was improvising. I had every intention of planting these orchids up in the smaller pot, so I was not calculating my media correctly. But I hope it was of interest anyway. Later on, when we go walkies, more gravel will be collected. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> we'll see what she does next, but I'm glad to get this job out of the way as well. I have a few more that I need to do. I can't get to them now, otherwise I'd make an orchid potpourri. We'll see that in a separate video. Anyway, Bletia striatas, we can check that one off the list. <laughs> I so appreciate you watching. Thank you so very, very much. Have yourselves a fabulous day on one condition though. Please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.